Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. In today's video, we're going to be looking at global war roundels. What we're looking at here is Europe from the game Global War 1936 version 4. And it's recently come out, it's a beautiful map. So we're also, we're uh, aside from this game, we're also going to take a uh, look at the Global War 1914 game, which is just about to be released. Uh, it is 99.999% done. The components are being produced as we speak, and it will be um, available for purchase really soon. So we're going to take a look at some snapshots of that game, like uh, some screenshots from the map online and compare, compare the roundels in that game with the roundels in this game and talk a bit about the history of the roundels in the Global War universe. And we'll even go back to the Axis and Allies universe, which is where a game like this originally was born out of. So let's just move the camera around here and we'll talk about where it all began. So back in the mid 80s, um, there was a game that came out, it was called Axis and Allies. We now know that game as Axis and Allies Classic, although it wasn't called Classic back then. <laughs> it was a brand new game, right? And these were the roundels. They, they were these little cardboard roundels, right? Um, and that's how you marked your territories that you took over. Um, and, and so uh, those were the five major powers in the game. And of course, uh, later on, they, they added it, Italy into the game and uh, China roundels as well. And that's the way things went for a few decades, right? And, uh, and then along comes historical board gaming. And uh, the, the guys there like to play games too. And so eventually, um, Doug started making roundels. He made roundels for all the neutral countries and everything uh, out of cardboard like these ones. But eventually he started making these roundels. And these were a big upgrade. So those are printed on hardboard. They, uh, they're they much brighter and, and they're easier to pick up like this roundel. Like you can't just, you, you've got to get your fingernail underneath it to pick it up. But these ones you can just, you can just pick up um, just like that. And so that those were a big upgrade on roundels and so uh, eventually they put out their own game uh, version well I guess they put out uh, the 39 game first Global War 1939 and that would have been version 1 and then version 2 of Global War came out and that's where the game that we're looking at now this version 4 uh, more closely resembles 39 was kind of like a bridge between Axis and Allies and, and Global War um, anyway, version two, most people think of as, as actually the first version of this game. So um, what we did in that game was the same thing as Axis and Allies did. These aren't actual flags. These are Air Force roundels. So that would be what you would see on the side of planes. And, you know, like there was other symbols as well, um, not just these ones. Uh, there was lots of different symbols for air forces, but these were just some of them that, that were used. And so the roundels that we used for the Global War game were also uh, air force roundels. And Doug had to make a lot of those up. I'm talking about Doug Friend from Historical Board Gaming. He's the one that designed all of the roundels for the Global War game. So he would, you know, like he would make up the Greece roundel. He would just take the colors from Greece and turn it into a roundel. Like some of them already had their Air Force roundels, but a lot of them didn't, right? Because, you know, not every country has an Air Force, right? Um, and so, you know, like some of them he had to make up from scratch and some of them he just copied from whatever markings they would put on the wings of their airplanes, right? Uh, so anyway, that's the way it went in version two and in version three. And we started developing the game Global War 1914 um, a number of years ago, actually, I got on board, I think it was 2017 or 18, and the game had already started being developed, but it really kicked off much more after that. It was mostly the concept that was put together before that point. And in that game, uh, we weren't using Air Force roundels because it was only like 
10 years earlier that airplanes were even invented, right? I think it was about 10 years since uh, the Wright brothers first flew a plane at Kitty Hawk. And, and so, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of Air Force markings that you could choose from, right? So we decided to use flag roundels. And what would happen was Doug would basically make, make up the a flag of uh, that particular country, like take the flag and turn it into a roundel. Like here, this is, uh, let's take a look at the old, oldest roundel on the board. Um, and that would be this one here. So this is the Denmark flag, right? Um, and that flag, believe it or not, is from the year 1219. Like that's a good four or 500 years older than the next oldest flag on the board. Um, it's the oldest flag in the world. Um, not exactly the oldest flag, but the oldest flag that's still around. I mean, they, they had flags before that, but those flags are have long since um, made it to the ash heap of history, right? This flag, for whatever reason, has endured uh, all of these years uh, from 1219, and it's by far the longest flag on the board. So when Doug made an Air Force round a lot of it, it this is what it looked like, right? Um, I don't know if that's what the Danish Air Force used, but uh, anyway, that's basically what he would do is he'd take a flag and turn it into a roundel. Um, but anyway, um, we made up the flag roundels for the 1914 game. And, you know, they just look so damn good. Like, they look much better than, than the Air Force roundels, and so they became popular. In version 3 of Global War 1936, uh, people started buying them like Doug would put them on the website and people loved them. He, they started buying them and so um, Now we have flag roundels for every single country on the board and not just uh, for World War two We've got them for World War one uh, We've got them for the Cold War. We've got them for modern war uh, there's just uh, oh, hundreds of roundels by now that they have at historical board gaming and it all started from these five roundels right here. That was the inspiration in the beginning, and, and it's just developed over the years. So as we move through this video, you'll see more and more of the changes that, that has been made to the roundels. And so let's get to it. So what we have here is the flag version of Global War uh, 1936 version 4. The, we've put out two different maps. One is the roundel version because a lot of people have bought, uh, spent a lot of money buying the roundels, you know, and so rather than having to buy a whole new set of roundels, then they have the option of, of using the, the roundel map. And there's nothing wrong with that map. It's just as nice as this map. It's just a matter of what kind of uh, markings that you prefer for the roundels. Anyway, this is the flag version of the map. And I'm just going to start at the top there. Like you see, there's the, uh, the Finland flag and the Swedish flag and um, the Norway flag. And as we move down through Europe, there's Poland and, and Czechoslovakia. And, uh, and Germany there, that was actually like a lot of these things, um, it's not the full flag because we've got a roundel. And so it's, it's hard to put everything in some cases that is on a flag onto the, uh, onto the roundel. So he might have taken elements like that symbol that you see there is the symbol of the Nazi party. And so that is what we're, uh, we've put on the map to represent the German flag in, in World War II. Whereas over here in France, that was the entire flag, right? The Bleu Blanc et Rouge. Uh, and so we've been able to put the whole flag on the map. And then down in Spain, we've got the, the, the nationalist roundel um, and the, uh, the Republican roundel for, for the Spanish there. Um, and then, you know, like the, we've got also the, the Italian roundel and there's several different roundels that you can get for each nation in some cases, especially the major nations in the war, like Italy there, you know, you can get the fascist roundel, you can get the air force roundel, you can get, uh, this particular roundel. Um, and then the world war one, I, I think the world war one is just slightly different. Um, here, let's just take a look at that. So. <laughs> Here's your first look at uh, the Finnish version of Global War 1914 in Europe there. So as we look at the Italian roundel, yes, it does look a little bit different. It's got 
Uh, I don't know, is it? <laughs> um, maybe not. Maybe that's the same one. But there's a couple of variations on that flag that you see there. Um, and so that's what we're using. And you can see there's the Austro-Hungarian uh, Empire there, which is kind of a cross between the Austrian flag and, and the hun Hungary flag. Um, that was also used in Axis and Allies 1914. Um, and you can see the, the French flag there. That flag is actually from, has been around since 1794. So <laughs> it was in both wars. And then the German roundel, that's, uh, that's an older version of, uh, the Iron Cross and, and, uh, or is it the Balkan Cross? I think it's the Balkan Cross, sorry. And then the Tsar, uh, standard of the Tsar, that's the one that's up in Russia there. And uh, that, we'll get to that later, but that changes once you get to the revolution. And uh, one of the things you can notice is down in the, like in Serbia and Romania and Bulgaria, those are older versions of the, the flag that we're using in World War II. Um, they kind of lost those imperial standards that you see on the flags there. Uh, World War I was really the end of the age of imperialism. So they, they started uh, around that time to, to get rid of, I mean, after that war, started to get rid of some of those uh, imperial type things and, you know, <laughs> uh, those kind of symbols. So let's just go back to the World War II. So there you see, like down over there, like the, the, the flag colors are similar, uh, quite similar. It's just they've lost the, the symbol that's in the middle of them on the Bulgarian flag. And, and that's now the Yugoslavian flag, whereas uh, the other one is the Serbian flag. Serbia was about 70% of, of Yugoslavia as far as population went. Um, and then the Romanian flag, of course, it's just simple now. It's just got the colors on it. It doesn't have any symbols on it uh, anymore. Anyway, uh, so that's Europe. So now we're going to move down to Africa here because I want to show you the colonial roundels. Um, so Doug, he's a pretty creative guy. Uh, a lot of the artwork that you see on the maps and, and the uh, player aids and stuff like that, the information comes from the designers. But a lot of the uh, what makes them look like the way they do, it comes from Doug because he's, he's very creative that way. Um, <laughs> so he just sits around some night, some evenings, just thinking, you know, what can I do with these roundels now? And with the, uh, World War One game, the 1914 game, he, um, it, it's, it, it's not broken up into the U UK and then, um, the FEC and, and Anzac. It, all of the, the British, um, territories on the map are all the same. They all have the Union Jack on them and they're all the same color and, and it's all one power, one economy, right? And so uh, we kind of did a little bit of work for you in case you wanted to house rule that. And so he came up with the idea of having colonial roundels. Um, and so that's where these came from. Like here's one in, in Sudan here, right? And Tanganyika and Rhodesia. Um, he came up with a whole set of these for the, uh, the World War I game. And what they are is the Union Jack on top and then some type of symbol from that con country or that uh, culture or something like that. Um, like it might be taken from their flag or whatever, right? It, it's just some kind of piece of, of the, that signifies that nation. And uh, you can see here this on the on the World War II map. So you've got a colonial roundel and a colonial roundel, but there's different um, different levels of being in the the British Commonwealth, right? Uh, these are actually called Commonwealth roundels in this game. They're we refer to them as colonial roundels. Sometimes I get I, I uh, confuse myself or I say the wrong thing, but they're actually Commonwealth roundels here. They're colonial roundels in the other game, the 14 game. But uh, like I said, there's, there's different levels of it. Um, the highest level of being in would be to have dominion status. And there's only a few nations with that. Canada is one of them and Australia and New Zealand 
and I think uh, I think Ireland has it as well. And basically, what it is is you're in the Commonwealth, but you have uh, not just your own government; they all have their own governments, but they're able to the, make uh, autonomous decisions for themselves uh, when it comes to domestic and foreign policy. So you can decide for yourself if you want to go to war. Um, you don't have to, like London doesn't get to decide whether you're going to war or not. But then there's other levels. Um, and uh, I'm not going to list them all off. This is a roundel video, not a video on the empire, right? But uh, so the, the, the lowest level is being a pr protectorate um, in the Commonwealth. Okay, so we like here, we take a look at Egypt here. And um, Egypt has its own roundel. Uh, they were part of the Commonwealth. That's why you see the color of the territory is is British. But they were only a protectorate of the um, of Britain. Um, <laughs> like there was an element in there that were decidedly against the British in, in Egypt. Uh, they didn't want to have anything to do with them. But uh, <laughs> they did like the Nath uh, them a little more than they liked the Nazis, right? And if the British were to leave, then the Nazis would move in. And there was no way the British were going to let that happen because of the Suez Canal, right? Uh, the British were never going to leave the Suez Canal uh, to the Nazis because that would have been the gateway to the Middle East and, and uh, that might have been the end of the war. The, the Germans wouldn't have had to go through the USSR anymore. They could have just taken the easy way down through uh, Egypt and, uh, and, and up through the, uh, the Strait of Hormuz there in the Indian Ocean or off the Indian o Ocean. Anyway, so um, that's why we have the, the different colored roundels on here. Uh, the, they're not just the British roundel and they're not a colonial roundel. So there's those ones, but there's also down here we have South Africa. Uh, they also had um, their own autonomy. Um, and they weren't, uh, they were just a protectorate, like they weren't part of the British Empire or, sorry, of the British Commonwealth uh, anymore. Um, unlike a lot of the other ones, like here in Rhodesia, right? Like they, um, they had their own decision-making ability. But we've made them like this and you can make up your own Commonwealth uh, set if you want, like your own set of rules. We've done a lot of the work for you by putting the roundels on the board for you. And that's where it started was, was uh, with the, uh, the colonial roundels, was with the British, right? Um, in uh, colonial roundels to begin with and then Commonwealth roundels, which in, for the most part are the same. Uh, like you'll probably find the same roundel. I know for instance, e uh, India, you get exactly the same roundel as you do uh, in the World War I game. But then he moved on, okay, well, there's other uh, colonial powers in the game, like here, we've got Portugal and we've got uh, France, right? Uh, there's Belgium here. And then we've got uh, Italy up here. Italy had uh, holdings outside of Italy. And so, um, so they have colonial roundels as well. And, uh, but there was a lot more of them in World War I. So let's just take a look at some of them. Like here, for instance, here's Egypt here. And so you see the difference there. Um, it's kind of like the Egypt flag, but yet it was, um, it, uh, we've got a colonial roundel for them, right? Because uh, the, they were uh, much closer at that point in time than they were later on in World War II when they had gained more autonomy, right? Now, going down to um, Southern Africa there, we don't have South Africa, but we do have, um, we do have uh, like this one here. I can't pronounce that. Anyway, that one with the light blue one there. In the, uh, World War II version of the game, that would be a South African roundel. And then you can see there, there's a German roundel. Back then, the Germans had an empire as well. And I'll show you some more of the German holdings around the board in World War I. But that was one of the reasons that the British decided to get involved in World War I was because 
Germany was building a navy at the time and that threatened uh, the British. The, the British were the, were the big colonial power uh, going into World War I and um, with Germany gaining territory around the world, that was a threat to them, right? And so um, they thought, hey, let's just fight them right here rather than have to fight them all over the world <laughs> later, right? So uh, anyway, when Germany lost World War I, they lost all of their uh, empire holdings. And so <laughs> uh, that's why you don't see any German colonial roundels in the 36 version of the game. Um, here we have, uh, there's uh, the Portuguese roundel again and the French roundel. That's, you see that's a different one over there. And uh, there's the uh, Nationalist Spain roundel. Actually, uh, in World War I, the, they didn't have the, the Republicans. It was just the, uh, just the Nationalists or just Spain. <laughs> anyway, so that's a Spanish colonial roundel there. That's an example of one. So let's just take a look at uh, a couple more examples of, of uh, the German Empire. Uh, they did have some things off in the Pacific there. Uh, here you can see <laughs> New Guinea. It's actually split into three different ways instead of two different ways like it is on the 36 map. So you have Kaiser Wilhelm Land and up above that the Caroline Islands were ruled by um, the Germans and there was German Samoa as well I think there might have been another island but also in China we can see, see that Shandong province was part of the German Empire as well and uh, you can look around and you can see uh, the the Chinese roundels now uh, some of these roundels like the purple roundel there and the blue roundel those were were just made up <laughs> for the version 3 game. They're not actual flags or anything. Uh, I think they did a good job. So all of those uh, roundels for the warlords in, in the World War II game, those were all um, fabricated. Uh, so I think they, they did a pretty cool job of coming up with some kind of markers for the different warlords. Um, and then you see up at the top there, the red one, that's an actual, from an actual flag. <laughs> we, we needed more um, warlords for the 14 game. And so uh, like the yellow one down at the bottom, that's one that you don't see on the World War II map. And the red one at the top, uh, uh, so the yellow one was just a kind of a copy of the other ones. We just made a different color of one. And then the red one at the top, ah, uh, geez, I can't remember whose flag that was. Um, anyway, so that, that signifies the Feng Xian faction in, uh, in the Warlords. And we have a card deck and uh, you'll see the pictures of the Warlords from each of the countries and, or sorry, from each of the uh, factions or cliques as they're called. Uh, so anyway, that's China there. Here, let's just, while we're at it, let's just take another um, gander at China. Um, so there's another picture of China where you can see it's, it's much like the, uh, the, the 36 map. Before we go back to the 36 map, let's just take a look down at the bottom right there. So that's the nationalist roundel. Um, there was a, a movement in China after the fall of the, the last emperor, the last dynasty, which fell in 1911. Um, there was a movement to unite the country. It was broken into all these different warlord factions and there was two governments. One was from the purple people up top there. <laughs> that was the Beijing uh, government up there. And then down at the bottom there, that was the nationalist movement. And um, the, you see the five colors on the flag there. That represents the five different distinct um, ethnic uh, groups that are in China. We, a lot of us just think of China as being Chinese people, right? Well, there's actually five different people in China. <laughs> there's the Mandarin and the Cantonese and um, oh, I, I'm not going to pretend to know all of them. But <laughs> anyway, there's five different ethnic groups in China and that's what that flag represents is the five groups of, of people in China, different ethnic groups. And then let's take a look at uh, the version four map here. So you can see the nationalists there. 
that uh, that's um, the flag. Uh, now we used to use just like you see the corner of the roundel there um, where it's got that little symbol. So this is what I'm talking about, this symbol here. This is what we used to use for the nationalists, what we used in, in version three. Um, that is uh, actually, that's the symbol of the Kuomintang um, political party. And um, we know that better as it, by its um, abbreviation, which is the KMT. Uh, so that's the, the KMT roundel, but we're using the national Chinese flag instead now, instead of just the KMT roundel. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that the KMT roundel is the one that is still used on the roundel map. The, I don't have the roundel map for version 4, but I know that was the one that we used in uh, version 3 of the game. Um, anyway, that's that's actually a political party symbol, so <laughs> you can see why the uh, the communists don't like that roundel anymore. That's actually on the Taiwanese flag. That uh, that symbol. Um, this this looks like the Taiwanese flag itself, actually. Anyway, so that's uh, that's China. So let's talk a little bit more about these colonial roundels that Doug came up with, and uh, how he came up with them. So we're looking at India there, um, and and uh, outside of India as well. Like so, we got Bengal and Burma. Um, <laughs> he tell you, there was a lot of debate on which roundel should go on on which territory um, over the last few years, because it's uh, you know I'm giving you information here, but there's a lot of people that might be watching this video going, no, that's wrong. And you could be right because it depends on what you read and whose uh, opinion that you read it from. <laughs> like the we, we debated long and hard whether or not to use the India roundel here in Burma. The people of Burma did not like the Indians. The Indians crapped all over the people of Burma. Like that's um, that's on the road to Malaysia, which is also um, the road to Singapore down here like that is uh that would be a way station on the way there rangoon burma um you know where you pick up supplies and keep going <laughs> so you know like uh the, the they went through there a lot right and the the indians did not treat the burmese people very well um they hated them and so you know to use the indian roundel on there is kind of uh kind of cruel but at the same time you know, like it, it, you could make a, a case for just about every territory on the board as far as the Commonwealth uh, to say that, well, this one should be different than this one, you know, like as far as the rules go, but <laughs> because they all had a different relationship to Britain. And so did all the other ones, like when, when we're talking about the French colonies and, you know, the Portuguese colonies and everybody, but particularly the British, like the, they're, the people of Burma, hated the British uh, being there because they brought the Indians in. They hated them so much that they actually had their own people, uh, a faction of them, fighting for the Japanese when the Japanese invaded Burma. I mean, they regretted it <laughs> because the Japanese, they were, they were not very nice. <laughs> they, uh, they did not treat people very well once they conquered them, let's say. And so they probably were wishing that the British and the Indians were back, and they did come back, right? But anyway, I'll, just so you know, like it, it wasn't easy. Then we'd have like three, four, five different guys debating over which um, roundel should be shown in which place, right? Um, for these games, and so it, it, it wasn't easy, right? Like we go through India here, and and, and there's Iran right there, uh, so. You know, it was pretty easy. Okay, we're going to use the Iran roundel, right? But, um, but in the World War One game, it uh, it wasn't so easy. The political situation in in Iran was much different. So here, let me let me just show you what Iran look or Iran looked like uh, back then. It was called Persia, right? So there we go. There's Persia, and you can see we've got the India roundel in uh, southern Persia. We've got the Russian roundel in northern Persia, and then we've got the Iranian roundel, I guess you would call it, 
in central Persia, but not even that territory was contested. The Germans were there. They had, I think they had 5,000 uh, Germans in there that were training their police force. <laughs> so, you know, like, like the fact that they were doing that, um, that, uh, that would bring some influence itself, right? Because they were con sort of controlling the police force in there. But then also, like you see off to the left there, uh, that's the uh, Ottoman Empire, Roundel. They were also in there, influencing them, like uh, the people of uh, Persia. <laughs> you could understand why they feel a little bit nervous on about all of the controlling powers that were in there. Uh, these are just some of them, like the Americans were in there and everybody was in there trying to carve up a piece of Persia for themselves. Uh, not to mention Iraq and Saudi Arabia and all those other places back then, right? But anyway, like another debate we had was um, about Southern Persia there. Like, should that be its own? Uh, it wasn't really controlled by India. It was more controlled by uh, London, right? But in, you know, for ease of gameplay, we've included it with the India roundel here in World War I, uh, just for the ease of that. And so when you take a look at that roundel, um, you know, like uh, how Doug came up with these roundels, uh, he would just study them, right? Like this one was pretty easy, actually. Like um, here, take a look at this little thing over here. Like this is, uh, you know, this is a symbol of um, this little flag here. That is called the Civil Ensign of British India. Um, and so that you can see it's got a red background on it, but there's also one that looks exactly the same that had a blue background on it And that would be the naval, the naval ensign of British India um, And then the symbol that's on there why they put that on their flag was they were trying to uh, Trying to appease the uh, Indian people right like they wanted them to like them And so here you see what that symbol is. It's called the star of India and that's some kind of, I don't know what exactly, but it's some beloved symbol in India or whatever. They thought that, oh, they'll like us more if we put this on the flag, right? <laughs> yeah, the British, uh, yeah, read the room, dudes. <laughs> anyway, so it's things like this that they used to, to come up with, uh, that Doug used to come up with what would go on the roundel. And like I said, India was pretty easy because, um, because of the, the flag that they used for British India, right? The civil flag. And then, you know, like the, the Australian flag, uh, the New Zealand flag, you know, like they just took symbols of those flags and made colonial roundels out of them. Here, let's just go back to the 36 game. So here you see a map of India, or <laughs> India. <laughs> Got India on my brain. No, there's a map of Australia there. And you can see like this would be the Australian flag for the most part, right? And it's got the, um, the uh, Union Jack on it to show that it's part of the Commonwealth. And then uh, down here, New Zealand is slightly different than, than uh, Australia because they had their own flag as well, right? Like uh, here, this is, I just noticed that. There's the Australian flag right there. Anyway, and uh, you can see there we're using the Japanese flag. The, the meatball, <laughs> as it's known. Anyway, so uh, that's uh, British colonial roundels. Actually, before we leave uh, the British Empire, let's just take a quick look at Canada here. So um, recently, um, in a discussion online there, uh, Trigg actually came up with something there. He was wondering, what is this piece right here? You see this? It looks like a little territory down here. Now that should be a part of Quebec, but it's not obvious, right? <laughs> because you look at it, well, is that part of Ottawa? Uh, I don't know. Um, it, like it's kind of, uh, don't really know what that is, right? Um, because it's not obvious. Anyway, so um, we fixed that for the 1914 game. So thanks for that, Trig. So Ottawa isn't really accurate anyway. I mean, none of the cities are accurate. Let's, let's face it, they're not supposed to be huge like that, right? <laughs> but anyway, the, the thing about Ottawa is that it's not on the American border and it does not border the St. Lawrence River here. So you shouldn't be able to amphib amphibiously assault Ottawa there. And so um, 
and so here here let me just show you so you can see what we did to fix it there we moved Ottawa a little bit to the north there and then we put the the border um, down uh, where it connects uh, well I mean there's a river in between but you can see how it connects there now this isn't finished because um, one thing that uh, that the artist didn't do was move the part on the right of that little uh, piece you see the part that that uh, cuts it off there well that should actually uh, be straight across so that the peninsula there is part of Quebec as well that's called the Gaspé Peninsula and that should be a part of, of uh, Quebec as well so it'll be even more obvious when we change that little border line there uh, take it from going across the territory and move it so that it's above what you see here on the 14 map as the Canadian Maritimes um, that's actually like that's uh, on the this map we uh, we call it the Maritimes because that's actually three different Canadian provinces there on the 36 map it's just called Nova Scotia but Nova Scotia is is the <laughs> actually here let's just go back I'll show you okay okay so going back to the other map this is actually Nova Scotia down here and this would be New Brunswick and then there's Prince Ed I'm not sure which one of these islands I think it's this one but I could be wrong one of those islands is called Prince Edward Island uh, so that's what we refer to as the Canadian Maritimes and we also include Newfoundland in that but in this game uh, and back then it was a little bit different because Newfoundland wasn't actually a part of Canada Canada back then it was still a British colony um, Newfoundland and Labrador and so this is all one province now uh, Newfoundland it's called Newfoundland and Labrador uh, people that aren't from Canada they call that Newfoundland and, and that's not how we call it it's it's Newfoundland um, the the emphasis is on the wrong syllable when the rest of you talk about it when you say Newfoundland we all kind of snicker to ourselves because that's not what it's called it's Newfoundland anyway that was a part of the Canadian Maritimes as well um, but anyway uh, the World War I map that calls those three provinces the Canadian Maritimes is a little bit more accurate than just calling that whole territory Nova Scotia and it's not going to piss off the people of New Brunswick either <laughs> or at least it shouldn't anyway uh, so let's move on so before we go I just want to show you uh, one more thing um, so you see here this is the Soviet roundel not a Russian roundel that's a Soviet roundel because in World War II of course the Russian Revolution and the Civil War has ended and the communists won <laughs> so <laughs> but how did we get to that point one of the things that I wasn't able to show you on the World War One map because it's not on the map you use roundels to denote that um, is the marker so this is the marker that you've seen on the map this is the imperial standard of the Tsar um, and uh, of course you have to remove that one because well you don't remove it it's still printed on the map but you wouldn't use it anymore because the Tsar and his family the Romanov family they're all dead the uh, the communists you know murdered the hell out of them <laughs> uh, I was actually I was reading about that I wanted to make sure that I understood that properly so I was reading about it this morning and, well who was Anastasia you know because I knew she was a Russian the like a daughter in that family and turns out that all those movies and stuff that they made about her and everything, she was killed with her family um, the <laughs> all that stuff that was that came out after was mostly made up because there was all kinds of women who impersonated her said she didn't die and you know like uh, it's me here I am right and it wasn't uh, <laughs> the movie the, the famous movie that was made about her wasn't about her it was about one of the women who impersonated her but anyway imperial standard of the Tsar get rid of that when the the uh, thing happens the Russian Revolution and then this becomes the Russian so this is the uh, the flag of the Russian Empire and this is the flag that they use today but that flag is actually um, I can't remember it's early 1800s anyway maybe mid 1800s it's been around for a long time that's the flag of the Russian Empire right um, so that's what will be used by what's known as the White Army and the White Army is the army that uh, um, is like the former Russians right the, the imperialists 
uh, the people that are still loyal to the Tsar, even though he's dead now, right? So that's the roundel you'll use for them. And then the commies, you'll use this roundel, which is kind of like this one, but this is an earlier version of it, right? This will be the Red Army roundel. And then, like, there's several other ones, like here uh, in the Ukraine, we've got, this is the Ukraine roundel that we're using for that, although you could use whatever Ukrainian roundel you want. Um, the Polish roundel, that it's the same Polish roundel that you see here on the version 4 map. Uh, this one here is something that you'll show where your capital is because here uh, right now is Leningrad, right, uh, at this point in time. But uh, that's only because, you know, Lenin, uh, in, during World War I, Lenin didn't live there, right? He was exiled. Uh, they didn't want him anywhere near Russia. But anyway, this was called Petrograd, and this was the capital of Russia. So when the commies took over, or when the revolution started, they moved the capital over to Moscow. And so you'll put this on Moscow to show that the capital has moved. It's no longer Leningrad. Now the capital is Moscow. But then there's lots of other markers you're going to need. Like uh, here, here's the Baltic Sailors uh, Roundel. And that one was, um, I think that was up around Leningrad, uh, or Petrograd, I guess. Um, that's where um, a part of the revolution started. Uh, you've got the, the German Freikorps roundel. Uh, these guys, <laughs> look up asshole in a dictionary, and they'll show you a picture of these guys, the Freikorps. They were the precursor to the SS, like that would have been their fathers and their uncles, or maybe their grandfather, right? They were not nice people. That's a Green Army roundel. And then here we've got uh, the Makno Army. Makno was an anarchist. He was actually Ukrainian. And <laughs> he didn't like the commies, but uh, the commies were railing against the establishment. And so he liked them better than he liked the Ukrainian government or the old Tsar's government. Uh, but he didn't really like anybody, right? They actually had a territory of their own. It wasn't marked off or anything, but... <laughs> They were just anarchists. They just didn't like anybody. And their leader's name was Macno. And this one here, this green one, this uh, this is the Black Army. Um, I discovered as I was reading through the history and everything that these are actually the same faction. So Macno was leader of these guys, the Black Army. But we have two different, um, two different random events that involve the Macno Army or the Black Army. And so... Uh, we, we decided to keep both roundels because, you know, this roundel will be for one of those random events and this roundel will be for the other random event. But they are the same, the same faction. Um, you can treat them the same or differently. It's up to you, right? And then, you know, like we'll use these ones. So when you do have uh, the white army has taken over a territory, um, it's controlled by somebody. So it could be controlled by the Germans or probably not the Americans over here, <laughs> that would be over near the Pacific, but it could be the British or it could be, uh, could be the Ottomans, right? Could be the French, there's, there's a French marker as well. Um, there's an Austria-Hungary marker. I, um, I didn't grab that one out of the box either. But anyway, you'll get a whole set of all of these markers that you're gonna need, um, uh, including these ones. Uh, you'll, get, you'll get all of these markers. When you, when you get, uh, I guess we're gonna call it an expansion set, but it's gonna be its own set. So there'll be a deck of cards. There's 36 cards that come with it and you'll get all the markers you need. So there'll be a bunch of these and a bunch of these. And I think probably six of these because um, there's uh, six Ukrainian territories. So there might, there's six or seven anyway. And you'll get the Polish markers and the Finnish markers because they're up there as well. And, uh, and then the rest of the markers that you need are, are you've already got, like the German markers or whatever uh, that are still on the board. And then uh, you get a set of all of these that you need as well. So that'll all come with that set. And you can play the game without all of this. You can play it without the Ref Russian Revolution and the Russian Civil War. Um, you know, just basically, okay, um, Petrograd has fallen or the Russians have fallen. So you just remove their units from the board and that'll be the end of it. So that in that way, you can play a two player game. But if you play with the Russian Revolution set, then it'll be a three person game uh, in the end, probably. I mean, it, it's 99% it's likely that they, they will devolve into a revolution. And uh, so, 
uh, when you use this set, then that player, the Russian player, will become the Red Army player, the Soviet player, and they will start counting their own points. And so it'll be a three-way game at that point. But I highly recommend that you have three players to do that because otherwise, I mean, you're going to be playing the whole game up to then knowing that the Russians are going to split off. And so you'll be, you know, there'll be shen shenanigans going on. Put it that way, right? Like you're going to be lend leasing the Russians a whole bunch of crap, right? <laughs> Just so they can destroy everybody once they become the Soviets, right? So anyway, uh, um, th you'll get a whole set of these things anyway. So that'll be cool. Uh, lots of different markers for that set. Uh, there might even be one or two more. I think that's all of them though. Okay then, time to say goodbye on this video. Uh, just to wrap it up though, there's one last thing I could mention, and that is these little roundels here. This is a half inch roundel. This is the what you're used to. This is the three quarter inch roundel. Doesn't look like it. Like this one is three quarters, this is a half. This one looks like it's a lot smaller than this one, but it isn't really. Once you put it on top, it's just, you know, it's uh, like a quarter inch all the way around. So it, m it makes it look a lot bigger, right? Anyway, this roundel here is what you'll be using. Here, let me just show you real quick. That is the diplomacy chart in Global War 14. And we made a set of roundels that are a lot smaller. And that will come with the core game. Uh, because it's hard to fit all the roundels on there. Uh, on the diplomacy chart if you're using these ones. And if you've magnetized your roundels to hang them, you know, to do it on the wall, you, you'll know that once you try to group a whole bunch of them together like that, that they start sticking to each other, right? <laughs> and it just makes a mess. Anyway, so these ones don't do that. Like for one thing, you look at, I just, uh, you know, the little uh, magnets that you put on the bottom of your planes. That's all I've got. The, this roundel is so light that um, it sticks to the wall just using that. And I've, I've uh, recessed it a bit too so that... Uh, it doesn't stick out. Um, anyway, you can do whatever you want with them. You can put it on a table if you want. But these roundels will fit on there a lot easier. I, I actually, uh, I've told Doug, you know, I think that this would it would be great to make these roundels for all of the charts on the walls, like your IPP charts and things like that. Um, it, your technology charts uh, for the games. It, it would sure make it a lot easier to, to fit all your roundels on, onto the charts, right? Um, anyway, um, we'll see what happens with that. But uh, but the, these uh, this is the next evolution, and that's little roundels. That's the the latest the, and greatest that we have at HPG. We'll see where that goes. If it's just this diplomacy chart, or if we offer them for more than that. Anyway, um, the other thing that I wanted to mention was that uh, <laughs> I don't know if you tried to find the roundel lately on. Uh, the website there on AP, HPG, but it, it's difficult. I know because I had to track down all the neutral roundels, you know, uh, so that we'd have a neutral roundel set for Global War 14. And man, the, the last couple of them, I, it just, I looked everywhere. And eventually you find them, but um, it, it's not very well organized because like it, it uh, the it's just changed so much like we've got these roundels and we got that roundel and when we get a new roundel and and it just goes on and on and on and they get put here put there well we're going to reorganize all that um over the next couple months uh, i don't know when we're going to start but it'll be soon though and so all of the roundels for all of the different games will be in one place and so i'm not sure exactly how we're going to do it like we'll say germany and then there will be all the German roundels and it'll tell you what era they're from. Or if we're going to, you know, say these are World War I and then show all the World War I roundels. I'm not sure how we're going to organize it. But what I, I can tell you is we're going to put them all in the same place so you don't have to go hunting all over the website to find the different roundels that you need to play all the different various games that we have and the other games that we make roundels for. Like we make roundels for games that HPG doesn't have. Um, just so you could use the nice roundels instead of using the old little cardboard markers for them that uh, it comes with the other games. Anyway, so we're going to do that and we're also going to reorganize the decals. Uh, like, I, I don't like the way the decals are on there. Like, I okay, well, what size do I need? And I, I just, you know, I'll get them and they'll be too big or something and because I didn't understand or whatever. Um, he's going to get rid of all the ones 
like he's going to sell them off. He's not just going to throw them in the garbage or anything, but get rid of all the ones that aren't the size to play the global war games or the Axis and Allies games. And they will be reorganized so that uh, they're, um, they're organized by country or by era or whatever. Uh, they'll be a lot easier to hunt down and you won't have to decide which size you need. The, the size that is on the site once we're done is the size that you're going to need to play these games. Uh, so it should be easier to find the decals because they're getting more and more popular all the time as well. And there's a lot more decals on there than there were even just say six months ago, right? So we're gonna reorganize those things as well. Uh, but the roundels, that'll be nice. It'll be nice to be able to find the roundels. Anyway, I hope that you found this interesting um, with all the different roundels in the game. Um, a lot of thought has been put into the placement of the roundels and which roundels to use. I can tell you I know a lot more about flags now than I used to know because a lot of the work that was done in uh, processing them and finding out, you know, what, how old this flag was and how old that flag was, I do a lot of that work. And so <laughs> I, I, you, I can just look at a flag now on anywhere, not just on these games, but anywhere I can look at a flag. Oh, that's the flag of Siam, right? <laughs> Not Siam now, like not Thailand. No, no, this that's that was pre you know World War II. <laughs> One of those useless skills that I've required. <laughs> anyway, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this. So take care, everyone. General Hangar Day out.